Hello and welcome back to Stop and Glare F1 for this, our Saturday morning news video. We may be in the summer break, but there's still stuff going off all the time. There's a lot to actually get through today. Uh, we're going to have a talk about Sergio Perez, and apparently how he is staying within the Red Bull team. Uh, we've got more on the Red Bull team, especially Jonathan Wheatley, who is going to be leaving. Another look at the whole Max Verstappen sim race stuff. Uh, we're going to have to talk about uh, the Dutch Grand Prix, the future of the Dutch Grand Prix. Uh, some interesting news coming out about that. There's a new Alpine team principal, everyone. It's that time of month again, so we'll talk about that, as well as potential uh, signings for Alpine for next year. And then also some inside information on the Carlos Sainz Williams move. So a lot to get through here today. So we will start momentarily. Before we do though, remember to like and subscribe. And of course, a big shout out to our members, Dakota, the Joyous James, and Robin Myers, and our brand new member, Sarah Strubble, who joined three days ago. If you want to join the membership, there's a link in the description. Uh, just as three tiers worth of memberships, all with different uh, benefits and all that kind of stuff. So go check that out if that is something you are interested in. And also, yesterday, my mid-season driver rankings came out. So every after every race, we give each driver a score between 1 and 10. I have added all the scores up and ranked them from uh, worst to best. There is one driver in there who, when I made the video, I went, wow, that's a lot lower than it should be. Should I leave that in? And I did, for the sake of honesty and decency. And it's gone down badly. <laughs> so if you want to check that out, that's available on the YouTube video. And that particular driver will be getting more generous ratings before the season ends. Shall we talk about some news, everybody? Let's talk about some news. Because there's been a lot of speculation going into the summer break of the future for Sergio Perez. I personally believe that we wouldn't see him in the Red Bull when we came back. I apparently was very wrong because Red Bull have confirmed that Sergio Perez will stay with the team after the summer break despite the rumours. This comes from Chris Medland, who is a very reliable F1 source. So it seems like it's going to be Sergio staying in the Red Bull. Now many have questioned why. And there's lots of speculation from this. So everything else I say now about Sergio Perez, take a pinch of salt because it is just speculation and has not been confirmed. But here are a couple reasons as to why Sergio Perez may be staying with the Red Bull team. Apparently Red Bull wanted to dismiss Sergio Perez, but Liberty Media have prevented it. Formula One rights holder Liberty Media asked Red Bull to reconsider their Perez reconsider their Perez dismissal. They feared a huge drop in revenue at the Mexican Grand Prix without national hero Sergio Perez. Uh, but Helmut Marco has hinted the cards will be reshuffled for 2025. Also hinted was the fact that Red Bull would lose an awful lot of sponsorship money if they did get rid of Sergio Perez to the point that it is being reported that if Red Bull kept Sergio Perez and finished second in the Constructors' Championship, they would make more money than if they got rid of Sergio Perez and won the Constructors' Championship. So a lot of money is being thrown around behind the scenes in terms of what is happening with Sergio Perez. From what they've said there, they're keeping him, but I don't think he's there for next year. It very much seems as well like this is another example of Helmut Marco versus Christian Horner behind the scenes at Red Bull. It seems like Marco massively wants to get rid of Sergio, which has been the case for quite some time now. It's been very clear that Helmut Marco does not like Sergio Perez. But then there's this entire power struggle thing going on behind the scenes at Red Bull, especially going back to the whole Christian Horner situation at the start of the season. And Sergio seems to be one of the guys who is a staunch defender of uh, Christian Horner. So from there, it seems like Horner's gone, he's my guy, he'll defend me, um, let's keep him. And it seems like another, on top of a million other power uh, things inside the Red Bull team. So it looks like Sergio Perez is staying for the time being, but as of right now, I did not see him in that car in 2025. Although, 
what we have seen with Sergio historically is he starts the season well and he ends the season well. And he has the moments in the middle where it isn't too good. Um, so maybe those middling moments of the season are over for him and he can come back from here and we'll see how it goes. I don't personally see it happening, but Sergio Perez is staying at Red Bull for the time being. But someone who is leaving Red Bull is Jonathan Wheatley, who will leave the team at the end of the season to become the new team principal... Pri <laughs> the new team Pringle, everyone. Let's say that again. To become the new team principal of the Audi F1 team. Now, a lot of changes behind the scene for Audi, of course. You had um, Andreas... Um, Andre St what was his name? Andreas Stella, that was it, wasn't it? Side I always get the two confused, Seidel or Seller. Maybe it was Seidel. Well, anyway, one of, I think it was Seidel, actually, yeah. He was part of that Audi team. He was given Das Boot. Uh, then uh, Binotto has come in in a technical role. And then Jonathan Wheatley is to join as the team principal. Now, Jonathan Wheatley has been part of the Red Bull team since 2006. Has been a huge part of the success of that team. Long term there. Um, and now has gone on to something brand new, another huge name leaving Red Bull. Of course, you've got to now draw the arrow to the whole Christian Horner situation again at the start of the year. You've got to think that maybe that has something to do with it. But also, you know, it's a great job for him as well. He was the guy who was put in the position that if Christian Horner was to go, he would take over as team principal of Red Bull. So you've got to think that he has the knowledge, the experience to lead a team. And when this offer comes in, you know, you've got to take something like that. You've got to take your chances on yourself. Um, he's been a great asset to the Red Bull team, of course. I think if you go back to Abu Dhabi 2021, which just saying those words has made my comment section a hellhole. But if you remember after that race when the whole appeal process was going through, I think Mercedes had brought like three different lawyers just in case something went down. Red Bull just sent Jonathan Wheatley and they won. So, you know, he, he understands the rules and regulations probably better than anyone else and is a great asset for the Audi team to have. And that combination of Binotto in a technical role and then uh, Jonathan Wheatley in this leadership role, I think, is a great combination for Audi. And hopefully will bring them some success. They're probably one of the most exciting things coming into F1 over the next few years. So it's interesting to see how that one goes. Sticking with Red Bull still, we have to talk about Max Verstappen and his late night uh, sim races. Now, I don't know if you heard, but Crofty did mention this a little bit during the Hungarian Grand Prix, but Max was doing some kind of 24-hour sim race and was up quite late before the race itself. There's been some speculation that Red Bull have now banned him from late night sim racing. And we've had quotes here from Dr. Helmut Marko, um, the uh, Red Bull advisor, Dr. Helmut Marko, has rode, rode back on assertions that Max Verstappen has him banned from late-night sim racing over F1 re weekends. The Dutchman was competing in the 24 hours of Spa sim race until 3am on Sunday morning ahead of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Marko said it would lead to a ban from sim racing late at night and Grand Prix weekends, something Verstappen has denied. And the Austrian has now walked back on this. Here's a quote. We have agreed in the future he will not drive past midnight, even though he has a completely different rhythm of life, says the 81-year-old. Uh, I don't know why this input says the 81-year-old, but there you go. But still, you have to avoid things that are un understandably attacked in public. Helmet Marco went on to reveal that they may not... Sorry, I'll say that again. However, Helmet went on to reveal it may not be a surefire ban after all, adding it was a very strong recommendation. So there is no ban in place. They've recommended not for him not to do it, but will he listen? Uh, probably not. Let's stick with some Dutch news, though, because our next race is the Dutch Grand Prix. Uh, it's going to stay on the F1 calendar, but not in the way it currently is. Uh, this is uh, a latest news story coming out, that the Dutch Grand Prix in Zandvoort will return to the calendar after 2025 and no longer be an annual event. The race in the Netherlands will now rotate with the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa. Uh, the parties have reached an arrangement on this. So this is huge news. Uh, not only Zandvoort, but Spa will now be in a rotational 
basis. Now, this has been threatened for a while now, especially around Spa. Spa are one of those legacy tracks in Formula 1 that doesn't necessarily pay as much as the new, bigger tracks do to be on the F1 circuit because they have that history. Monaco is in a similar uh, position. And it's been threatened for a while now that certain tracks will be rotated in and out. And it looks like they've made the decision here that it'll be Spa and Zandvoort. Very reminiscent of a few years ago, we had it with the German Grand Prix, where one year it would be Hockenheim, another year it would be uh, the Nürburgring uh, Grand Prix circuit. So it's very similar to that, but now with these two. I imagine there will be a bit of uproar coming back at, you know, Spa not being every year because that is a hugely historic track. Uh, but I think, you know, there's positives and negatives to this. Obviously, I'd like to see both tracks every year. But I guess it will make it a bit more exciting if we don't see them every year. You know, you'll have that gap of being excited again to go see Spa. Let me know what you think on this one because I can see it both ways at the minute. Let's go on to Alpine. Because it's been like a week since we talked about Alpine, so it's time again to talk about Alpine, everyone, because they have a new team principal. And it has gone to Oliver Oakes. Now, if you aren't familiar with the name Oliver Oakes, he is one of the founders and the team principal of the high-tech team, which are currently competing in uh, Formula 2, Formula 3, you know, loads of other formulas around the world, and mainly uh, organised around the junior categories. Now, there was um, the report last year that high tech had applied to become a Formula One team and that application was rejected. Um, and it looks from there that Oliver Oakes has decided he wants to join F1 either way and has taken the new role available at Alpine as their team principal. So we'll have to wait and see how this one goes down. I like this, to be fair. I quite like the idea of promoting team principles from Formula 2 to Formula 1. I mean, you know, it's done all right for people like Christian Horner and... Um, Frederick Vasseur as well was a Formula 2, well, a GP2 team principal, as it was at the time. So, yeah, why not give them a promotion, see how he does? I mean, Alpine have tried everyone else, so why not? Hopefully this one will last longer than a year. But there has been a rumour going around for a while now, a bit of a quiet rumour, that one Paul Aaron could potentially be joining uh, Alpine next year. He currently drives for high tech in Formula 2. And now this adds a bit more um, legitimacy to that rumour with Oliver Oakes, the high tech uh, team principal, joining the team. The high tech driver who is currently battling for the Formula 2 championship. Who knows? We could see that there. But there's an even bigger rumour about who's going to be in that Alpine seat, and that is Jack Dewan, who apparently is on the verge of signing a deal with the Alpine Formula 1 team that will see him race alongside Pierre Gasly next year. Although it's understood that the final contract has not yet been signed, it is suggested that the formalities will be completed in the near future. Now, this Alpine seat has been one we've talked about for a while. Jack Dewan, Paul Aaron, Mick Schumacher has been in the discussion there as well. It very much seems like Alpine's start of the year performance, where you could very much easily argue they were the worst team on the grid, has come back to haunt them a little bit here. Also mixed with their behind-the-scenes stuff, where you know their restructuring seems like every six months to a year. It looks like no current Formula 1 driver really wants to sign with them because it's just so unstable there behind the scenes. We saw that with Carlos Sainz, who was apparently approached to join the team. So it has seemed for a while now that if if Alpine uh, are going to sign anyone, it's going to be someone who hasn't been in F1 before or is currently outside of F1. And it looks like Jack Dewan is that guy. And I, I like Jack Dewan. I, I don't think he's the greatest. I don't think he's one of those like Oscar Piastri, Kimi Antonelli types who's this generational star just waiting to be on Earth. But he's still a very decent driver. I mean, the thing is with Alpine is they have a lot of very talented young drivers. You know, not just Jack Dewan, but Victor Martins is there as well. Gabriele Mini is in uh, Formula 3 at the minute. He is very good. And then you have got a Mick Schumacher on the sidelines. So they have got a lot of options, despite the fact that no one currently within Formula 1 wants to drive for them. But yeah, Jack Dewan will make an interesting addition to Formula 1 next year. And our final little bit of news here goes back to um, the... Carl Sainz signing for Williams news. There's been a lot of talk around this this week. 
James Val is doing a lot of media appearances, um, as he likes to do, and is very good at them. But something that's interesting that's come out from this is that James Vowles first made the approach to Carlos Sainz, joined Williams, at Abu Dhabi last year. Now, this was before the whole Lewis Hamilton thing came out, and I don't think the Lewis Hamilton thing was even agreed at that point. So James Vowles has made it very clear he did not know that Lewis Hamilton was going to be leaving Mercedes. Because I don't think Lewis Hamilton knew that he was leaving Mercedes at that point in time. Uh, but yes, he went to Carlos Sainz at Abu Dhabi last year and apparently only approached him and was looking to see maybe if he wanted to join Williams for 2024, is what I've been seeing reported here. Now, there was that whole thing towards the end of last year where Sargent's contract hadn't been agreed and there was lots of speculation as to if he would stay or if he would go. But it looks like there was a whole thing that it could have been Sainz leaving Ferrari to join Williams. I mean, at the time, Sainz shot it down. Because why would you leave Ferrari to join Williams when you have a contract there? So I understand that from that point of view. But it also seems like that initial meeting there is what eventually has led to uh, Carl Sainz joining Williams for 2025. Now that his uh, seat was been, has been taken by Lewis Hamilton. So... Yeah, James Fowles is in love with Carl Sainz. That's what's come across over the last week or so. So that is an interesting story to keep an eye on. But there you go. That's all we got to talk about this week. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. As I said, mid-season driver ratings video is out. Go check that out unless you're a George Russell fan. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Look, in the end of season's ratings, I'll give him a better score. I promise. <laughs> right. Uh, next Friday. Next Friday is a big one here for the channel. Because our new F1 documentary comes out. DJ Peroni, the real 1982 Formula 1 world champion. That comes out on Friday. I might put it as like a premiere thing. Because I'm very happy with how that one's gone down. I'm looking forward uh, to you all seeing it. Until then though. We'll see you on Friday. If not next Saturday for the news video. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you then. Have a good one. Goodbye.